there are two broad categories of rifle ammunition, rim fire and center fire. Rim fire, those on the left, have to be struck on the rim in order to discharge by the firing pin of the firearm. Center fire on the right has to be struck in the center by the firing pin of the firearm in order to discharge. Rim fire cartridges are smaller. There's not much on the end of the cartridge other than perhaps a letter to signify who makes the cartridge. There's a small amount of powder. Their dangerous range is about a kilometer and a half. Typically, the most common one is a 22 long rifle, which this is. The center fire cartridges now. Center fire cartridges have a much longer range. Dangerous range of the average hunting rifle, which is center fire, is about four to five kilometers. They have the same basic number of component parts. They have an outside case that holds everything together. They have a primer that fits inside of the center of the cartridge case. That's what ignites the gunpowder. This is the gunpowder. The gunpowder burns rapidly and pushes the projectile out of the barrel of the firearm. Center fire are much more powerful and they typically have on the base of the cartridge the caliber, which this says is 300 Savage, and the manufacturer, with this, this says FC, for Federal Cartridge Company. First rimfire cartridges, when they were first produced, had projectiles that were coated in wax. These are just lead projectiles, and they're covered in a, a wax compound. Now we wash them, or we plate them in copper or a brass solution to help them slide down the barrel. When rim fire cartridges were first used, there were larger sizes because black powder, a low, relatively low pressure propellant was used, so it could handle, the simple thin brass shell could handle larger cartridges, like this 32 rim fire. Now they're obsolete. We don't use black powder anymore, we use modern smokeless powder. So we look at cartridges like this, which was the first 22 caliber rim fire developed, 22 calibers, the diameter of the projectile, which is 0.22 of an inch. This was the short because, of course, it's relatively short. It was used in galleries and stuff. The next evolution was to produce something a little faster. This is the long, the 22 long. It was a little bit faster shooting the same bullet as the short. The next evolution was the 22 long rifle. The long rifle is faster still and shoots a heavier bullet, which has a little more mass, and it's still a very effective cartridge, very accurate cartridge, perhaps the most commonly produced cartridge in the world. The next evolution of that is a cartridge called the 22 Magnum. Now, these cartridges, the 22 Magnum, the 22 long rifle, and the 22 long and short, have different diameter bases. This one and this one, the long and the, and the short, both have the same diameter basis, and most are interchangeable in most firearms. The long rifle has a larger diameter base, and it will not fit in the long because it has a little more power. You can use longs in a long rifle, but you cannot use a long rifle in a long. Same with shorts. You can use a shorts, short in a long rifle. You just cannot use a long rifle in a short. You can use smaller in the bigger chambers, but not vice versa. Same is not true for the Magnum. The Magnum is bigger, larger in diameter as well, and, the, and it will not fit in the chamber for a 22 long rifle. The final evolution in the rim fires was to take the 22 Magnum cartridge case and squeeze the neck down and put a bullet on there the diameter of a pellet which is 0.177 of an inch. So this is called the 17. The 17 invented by Hornaday. Hornaday HMR, I believe is the terminology used. The 17 HMR. There are other evolutions in rim fire designs. There's some specialty ammo. There are 22 long rifle shells, which hold small, small BBs. This one holds number 12 shot, and so does this one. This one is an actual capsule that breaks when it's dispersed. And this one, the ends of the cartridge case are actually folded over to hold a very small shot. They're originally designed for killing snakes and mice out of revolvers that people could carry in places where snakes and mice were problems. There are two broad categories 
of rifle projectiles. Those that are solid on top, called full metal jacket, and those that have an exposed top designed to peel back or expand. Full metal jacket style of ammunition is used by the military. You will see this projectile here. I shot into 1,000 liter container of water and you could almost reload it into another cartridge and shoot it again. There's no expansion. This, however, is a hunting bullet. This is designed to expand. It has an exposed lead top and when shot into the same container, produced a projectile that was over double the diameter of the actual bullet and I had all types of sharp shards protruding out, which would slice as it spinned through whatever game animal. Full metal jacket ammunition cannot be used for hunting. It is illegal in Nova Scotia to have in a game habitat, whereas soft point ammunition is what you want for a quick, humane kill on uh, game animals. This is a 22 long rifle, and this is a projectile that's been fired into a water tank. You can see it's expanded somewhat because it's soft lead. The next cartridge I have here you'll see is a uh, it's a hunting bullet because it has an exposed lead tip and this is the results fired into a water tank. This is 223 caliber and there's about double the expansion and some nice sharp shards. It would take down an animal fairly well. This is a 3030 cartridge and it's a new design by Hornaday so that you can use it in lever action rifles. It's a pointed bullet which travels well, but you can use it in lever actions. It did very well in the water tank. 270, a very common caliber. You will see the most common bullets, the Game Kings, uh, the lead tip bullets, you see the lead, they expand it very well. It would be, that would make a nice wound in a game animal, kill it quickly. Uh, you can buy also Sphere uh, 100 grain bullets, which work well on Coyotes, these are absolutely devastating for, for small game animals. You'll see how this just blew apart. The lead was all over the tank. You just couldn't collect it. And a Sierra Game King in 308 performed really, really well. Jeez, this would take down a moose, this fella. Like just look at the shards and the diameter of that. The new performer, the new kid on the block, the 6.5 Creedmoor. One of the most common cartridges of or projectiles available is the 143 grain ELDX bullet, Hornaday. And it performed pretty well too, if you look at it. What I would like to say though, is how copper projectiles are performing. So I tested a few of those. This is one of Hornaday's uh, all copper bullets for the 6.5 Creedmoor, and you'll see that it performed probably better than any other lead bullet here because it retained all of its weight, but yet still looks like a buzzsaw. And that going through an animal would do a lot of damage, a lot of terminal performance there. I tried them out on the 300 Winchester Magnum as well, the Hornaday projectiles, and I tried them at various velocities to simulate distances out to a thousand yards. Up close, this is 3,100 feet a second in the 300 Winchester Magnum. You will see that that's absolutely devastating. It's way bigger than 30 caliber. It's almost tripled in size. And this ring stayed on until about three and a half feet in the water tank. And this went right to five feet in the water tank. Very impressive. Just as impressive as another all copper that I'm going to talk about in a second. And this, you will see, did very well. That's, a, that's to simulate uh, the 300 Winchester Magnum's performance at a couple hundred meters. This was shot at the 308 velocity. And this one was shot at 3030 velocity, and it's still a very admirable performance. Like, it doubled in size in surface area with very sharp shards. The Barnes bullets performed admirably as well. This is 168 grain Barnes bullets at 30-30 velocity. It, it's still quite impressive. Those, those talons there would cut very well. At 308 velocities in the 300 Winchester Magnum, it performed very, very well. This thing, whew, just be devastating. But at 3,100 feet a second, these pedals, these talons, I should call them, stayed on to about three and a half feet, similar to the Hornaday. And this went five and a half feet into the water tank. This slug in the center, this is probably, probably the most impressive projectile I've fired. In general, the copper slugs are very, very impressive. I think the performance would be much preferred, the solid copper bullets, over the lead. 
They don't lose any weight like copper does or like the lead traditional lead hunting bullets does. The copper does not lose weight. It holds together and it pucks a solid hole and stuff. Very impressive. The last type of rifle ammo I'll mention is blank ammo. And you can differentiate it almost immediately because it doesn't have a projectile. The end of the cartridge case is folded over to hold the gunpowder in. Uh, just because it doesn't have a projectile, though, doesn't mean it's not dangerous. It shoots a ball of compressed gas, which could do serious damage if it came into contact with anything at close range.